Many of those brave enough to visit these places have said that they never want to go back. These are seven of the most haunted locations in Europe. Today's video was done in collaboration with Nightmare Fuel. More on that later. Number 7. The Catacombs in Paris Beneath the surface of one of the most famous cities in the world, there is a vast network of tunnels and mine shafts. The bones and skulls of over 6 million people are stacked in this underground maze. The decision to place the dead here was taken in the 18th century, when Paris was faced with overflowing cemeteries and a series of cave-ins. During the French Revolution, the dead were buried directly in the catacombs. Tourists are welcome to explore the place, but they are encouraged to stay with the group, for it is very easy to get lost. At the main entrance, visitors are warned, stop, this is the empire of the dead. Throughout the years, there have been many stories of people going into the catacombs and never finding their way back. It is said that the mine shafts serve as the actual entrance to hell. The tunnels stretch for miles, there is no cell phone service, and if one is to stray from the group, dying alone in the dark is a real possibility. Visitors have claimed hearing voices and footsteps that echo throughout the catacombs. Paranormal investigators have captured the image of a silhouette, whom they believe to be the catacombs architect, roaming the tunnels of the ossuary he had designed several centuries earlier. Number 6. Chateau de Brissac the tallest castle in France is home to one of the most famous ghosts in the world, La Dame Verte, or the Green Lady. At one point during the 15th century, when he returned to the castle, nobleman Jacques de Brez found his wife Charlotte of France in bed with one of her huntsmen. The events that followed have been provided with two versions. One has Jacques killing Charlotte and her lover with a hundred strikes of his sword. The other has him strangling Charlotte in the Brizac Chapel Tower later that day. Whatever the truth might have been, Jacques was imprisoned and the castle was eventually owned by the Duke of Brizac. Before long, the Duke and his family started to notice the presence of a lady in a green dress who wandered the halls of the castle. It was believed that the lady was Charlotte's ghost. Her face was described as that of a corpse, with gaping holes where her eyes and nose should be. Nowadays, the current Duke of Brizac has said that he and his family have grown accustomed to sightings of the ghost. Two suites in the castle have been made available to the public if they wish to spend the night. Some visitors have reported seeing the Green Lady, while others have claimed hearing her moans from the room where she was supposedly killed. Number 5. The Ancient Ram Inn in Gloucestershire, England The Ancient Ram Inn was built in 1154, and throughout the years it has served as a priest's residence, a public house, and ultimately an inn. The land on which it sits is situated at the intersection of two major ley lines. Certain paranormal experts claim that these lines contain a significant amount of spiritual energy. On a map, these particular areas have been traced back to Stonehenge, the most famous sacred site in England. It is believed that the energy which flows through the lines feed the inn's paranormal activity. It is said that at one point during the 16th century, a witch took refuge in one of the rooms before she was found and burned at the stake. This happened at the height of persecution against those who did not practice Christianity. The room still exists today, and it is called the Witch's Room. The inn's sole owner, John Humphreys, bought the place in 1968. He claimed that one night after he had gone to sleep, a demonic force took hold of his arm and dragged him across the room. He had also found evidence of human sacrifices and devil worship. Under the staircase, he stumbled upon the skeletons of children with broken daggers inside of them. It is believed that they had been part of satanic sacrifices and that the daggers had been broken so that they could never be used again. Visitors who spent the night at the B&B reported hearing the sound of children screaming. Others claimed that they had been held down by invisible forces. After news about the haunted inn started to circulate, waves of curious visitors and paranormal investigators started coming in. A child's scream was even captured on video, along with the voice of a man urging the inn's visitors to get out. Others have reported that the wooden beams started vibrating when they touched them, and that objects from the house started to hover. Some of the visitors got so scared that they jumped from the inn's first story window. John Humphrey's daughter Caroline, who now runs the inn, told interviewers that as a child, she got so scared that she would sleep in a caravan outside the inn. Number 4. Musham Castle 
Also known as Witch's Castle, the Musham Castle in Salzburg, Austria dates back to the 12th century. Between 1675 and 1687, some of the most gruesome witch trials in Austrian history took place on the castle's premises. Those found guilty of practicing witchcraft were tortured and then executed. Some of them were beheaded while others had their hands cut off. The vast majority of the victims were reportedly under the age of 21. It is said that their spirits still haunt the castle and its surroundings. Between 1715 and 1717, the livestock around the area was constantly attacked by numerous packs of wolves. The locals started to form hunting parties with the purpose of finding the beasts and killing them. However, those who went searching for the wolves never came back. Before long, it was suspected that they had either been mauled to death by the beasts or that they had become beasts themselves. People suspected of being werewolves were imprisoned in the castle and afterwards they were trialed and killed. Members of television shows who have attempted to document the paranormal activity taking place at Musham Castle have spoken about being able to see, hear, and even feel the presence of ghosts. Number 3. The Edinburgh Castle the Edinburgh Castle is considered by many to be the most haunted fortress in the world. The castle's bloody heritage is considered to be one of the factors behind the reports of paranormal activity. Throughout its 900-year history, it has been the site of many imprisonments, executions, and surprise attacks. People stricken by the plague were sent to the castle's dungeons, where they were left to die. Lady Janet Douglas of Glamis was one of the fortress's prisoners before she was burned at the stake for witchcraft in 1537, while her young son was forced to watch. Before the fortress was under siege from Oliver Cromwell in 1650, the ghost of a headless drummer boy reportedly appeared before those inside the castle as a warning. In 2001, the Edinburgh Castle served as the location for one of the largest paranormal experiments in history. None of the 200 participants were told which areas of the castle were reportedly haunted. The vast majority of them reported seeing shadowy figures, feeling sudden drops in temperature, and that someone or something was pulling at their clothes. Number 2. Hoyo Bacho Forest The Hoyo Bacho Forest, located near Cluj-Napoca, Romania, is considered by some to be the world's most haunted forest. It was named after a shepherd that had disappeared in the area along with a flock of 200 sheep. The forest is often referred to as Romania's Bermuda Triangle. A number of unexplained apparitions and ghost sightings have been reported by those who ventured deep into the forest. Visitors have also claimed feeling as though they were being watched along with other physical sensations such as nausea, anxiety, migraines, and vomiting. Among the strange phenomena that visitors have described is also the way in which they experience the passing of time. One story told by locals is of a little girl who had gotten lost in the forest when she was five, only to emerge five years later wearing the same clothes and having no recollection of what had happened to her. It is said that in the Hoyo Bacho forest, the wind speaks, and some visitors have also reported hearing female voices and laughter. Paranormal explorers from around the world have been fascinated by the forest for years. They were able to capture ethereal faces and shapes on film and in photographs. Such sightings have been reported by visitors as well. Many of them have also emerged out of the woods with unexplainable rashes, cuts, and burns. The forest has a clearing in the shape of an almost perfect circle where vegetation never grows. Soil samples have been taken from the area, but nothing that would prevent the growth of plant life has been found. It is believed that the circular plateau is where spirits gather. Other theories have shaped the notion that it might be the entrance to another dimension. Photos taken there have revealed the outlines of human figures, ghostly silhouettes, and hovering shapes. People living in the area do not enter the forest for fear that they might never return home. Number 1. Povelia Island this small island is located between Venice and Lido in Italy's Venetian Lagoon when the bubonic plague, also known as the Black Plague, swept through the European continent in the 14th century, Ovalia, like many other small islands, became a quarantine colony. People who showed symptoms of the disease were exiled on the island. For many, this would prove to be a death sentence. Those too weak to oppose resistance were burned together with the dead on giant pyres located at the center of the island. Others were buried or dumped into large pits. 
The fires burned once more in 1630 after the Black Death had returned to the mainland, and Povelia again became a dumping ground for Venice's sick and desperate. The number of people that have died on the island is so great that its core is still lined with human remains. The charred bodies mixed with the soil to create a thick layer of ash. It is believed that more than 160,000 dead bodies are embedded in Povelia's landmass. Despite the island's dark history, in 1922, a psychiatric hospital was built on its premises. Before long, patients started to complain about seeing the ghosts of plague victims and that at night they could hear the wails and cries of tormented souls. The hospital staff ignored their complaints, assuming they were hallucinations caused by their medical conditions. It is rumored that one of the hospital's head physicians performed a series of gruesome experiments on some of the patients in an attempt to find cures for their mental disorders. The horrors that they endured included lobotomies which were executed with the use of hammers, hand drills, and chisels. Most of the experiments reportedly took place in the hospital's bell tower. It is also said that after some time, the doctor began seeing ghosts as well. One night, they led him to the bell tower where he had tortured so many people and pushed him off. According to the legend, the fog didn't kill him. As he laid on the ground screaming in pain, a mist appeared out of the ground and choked the life out of him. Nowadays, tourism is banned on Pavalia Island. Fishermen from the neighboring areas are hesitant to cast their lines in the water around the island for fear that it might still be contaminated with human remains. The Italian government have been unsuccessful in their attempts of finding a private buyer for the island. The few people that managed to avoid police patrols and actually set foot on the island have described their experience as terrifying. They have claimed hearing disembodied screams and moans, as well as feeling an evil presence. One traveler talked about hearing a clear voice saying leave immediately and do not return. Growing up, I always had plenty of books to read. My family and I lived in a modified schoolhouse from a long time ago so my house always had a creaky, creepy feel to it. It used to be two classrooms, one upstairs and one downstairs. The lower floor became the primary classroom after leaks had ruined the upper floor, but renovations made it a house today. Probably why a lot of kids never wanted to come over. Being an only child was, as I'm sure you can guess, quite boring. <laughs> 